Tibet, a presentation by Kelsey Hay, Dustin Crochet, Nicole Matters, and Megan Smith. Tibet is a vast and diverse region in Asia situated between India, Nepal, Bhutan, and China. Tibet has a wealth of natural resources, including many lakes, rivers, forests, and mountains. The people of Tibet had their own unique culture, religion, and traditions. Historically, Tibet was a self-governing, independent empire with a strong military presence for centuries. Tibet had many international relations, won numerous wars, and signed several treaties. Religion is one of the most important aspects of the Tibetan culture. The practice of Buddhism is a key part of the daily life for most Tibetans and influences many aspects of society. In 1949, things took a turn for the worst when Tibet was invaded by China. In November of 1950, because of the Chinese uprise, the 14th Dalai Lama became the political leader of Tibet at the young age of 16. In May of 1951, Tibet was forced to sign the 17-point agreement on measures for the peaceful liberation on Tibet, which essentially gave China power to take full control over all orders in Tibet. In September of 1951, troops invaded Lhasa, destroying monasteries, suppressing religion, denying political freedom, and imprisoning people. When Tibet tried to resist colonization, the Chinese retaliated by murdering thousands of men, women, and children. In 1959, the Dalai Lama and approximately 100,000 Tibetans fled to India, where they have been living in exile ever since. It is estimated that 1.2 million Tibetan people have died as a result of China's occupation. Following colonization, Tibet was divided into several regions, including the Tibetan Autonomous Region, hereafter referred to as TAR, and several prefectures. Although there are approximately 6 million Tibetans, only around 2.09 million of those live within the TAR. A treaty was signed stating the Tibetan government still had autonomy. However, the Chinese government have frequently violated this treaty as evidenced by acts of marginalization and political, religious, and cultural oppression. The Chinese Communist Party have taken control over all internal and external affairs in Tibet. There is currently no active Tibetan government within Tibet. As a result of the Chinese occupation, we are seeing a large volume of Chinese migrants in Tibet. Prior to Chinese occupation, Tibetan people had not been introduced to Western medicine. However, they practiced very traditional medicine based on their Buddhist religion. We are now seeing many health issues in the Tibetan population that can be directly related to Chinese colonization. Some societal issues that are currently affecting Tibetan health include structural violence from the Chinese military and continuous oppression of the Tibetan people. These societal issues have greatly impacted the Tibetan population's social determinants of health. In regards to income, Tibet's economy was traditionally dependent on agriculture, but has expanded to include a multitude of services since the Chinese takeover. The 2011 GDP was 60.5 billion yuan, equivalent to 9.6 billion U.S. dollars. A 2008 Chinese report showed that average disposable incomes of urban and rural Tibetan residents were $1,798 U.S. and $457 U.S. respectively. In 2005, the service industry overtook agriculture as the dominant economic driver. Tibetans struggled to find and maintain employment due to the lack of training and the hiring preference given to Chinese migrants. The physical environment also plays an important role in the Tibetan people's well-being. In an act of colonialism, nomadic herdsmen and many traditional Tibetan villages were forced to relocate to new communities at the discretion of the government. New housing standards were put in place, and the owners of homes that did not meet these standards were forced to remodel or rebuild. Tibet has also struggled with achieving a sanitation and cleanliness standard, which is evident in rural communities. These poor conditions contribute to the spread of disease and illness. TAR is now considered a province of the People's Republic of China, and as such is governed by Chinese law. This provides Tibet with autonomy in policies regarding education and language. However, as with other provinces, they are subject to routine administration by appointed government officials. The Tibetan population has a literacy rate of 25% and is seemingly lower in rural areas of Tibet, which can be directly related to the poor education standards. Accessing culturally sensitive and high-quality healthcare in rural Tibet is challenging for many individuals as the Chinese government has allocated the majority of funds to the large urban areas of the country. Village doctors work in local clinics, However, these doctors typically lack adequate training. Provincial and county hospitals are staffed by Chinese physicians and nurses who are not trained in traditional Tibetan medicine or healing. Other barriers to health care for rural Tibetan people include long travels to quality facilities, cost of accommodations and medicine, and the linguistic and cultural differences that are present in urban communities. From an emic perspective, it is easy to understand the frustrations of the Tibetan population. They were once a strong, independent nation with a unique culture, religion, and government. Today, Tibet is under tight Chinese control. Traditional Tibetan religious practices have been banned by the Chinese government and carry severe criminal penalties. Faced with tremendous adversity, Tibetan people have been resilient, taking measures to ensure their culture survives. The government in exile and the Dalai Lama have been fighting to ensure Tibet becomes a sovereign nation once again. From an ethnic perspective, we can understand why the Chinese government believes they are benefiting Tibet, as they have introduced modern technology, infrastructure, and medicine to the region. Facilities such as the Tibetan Birth and Training Center address culturally sensitive health concerns and barriers to proper maternal care. Statistically, many aspects of Tibetan health have improved over the past decades, including the decrease in maternal and infant mortality rates and the increase in life expectancy. However, these rates are still poor in comparison to the national average. The World Health Organization Constitution states that the highest attainable standard of health is a fundamental right for every human being. 
So it's important to note that although China may believe it is improving the health of Tibet, fundamentally they are not recognizing the human rights of Tibetan citizens. There are many connections that can be made between the Tibetan people and the Hmong people of Asia. In the book, The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down, we learn that China uses their strong military to try and make the Hmong people assimilate to their culture. Just as assimilation, the Hmong people migrated to Southeast Asia. This is similar to how the Tibetan people fled their homeland and now live in exile. Post-colonial theory helps to analyze and describe structural inequities that have resulted from colonization of a culture. By utilizing this aspect of the post-colonial theory, we are able to identify the similarities between the Hmong and Tibetan people. Both of these groups were considered to be inferior cultures, which caused them to fall victim to the hegemonic power of China. This was evident by the repression and lack of control over their own culture and spirituality, and by the limited access of their own traditional medicine and healthcare practices. Another aspect of post-colonial theory is resistance, which examines how colonized groups work to sustain and reclaim their cultural identity. China has spent countless years oppressing the Tibetan people, however, the Tibetan population and culture is resisting the oppression with great force. This is similar to the Hmong, who resisted Western medicine when they immigrated to the United States. However, this form of resistance was due to the lack of communication and significant language barrier between the Hmong people and the American medical staff. Although Tibetans' resistance has unfortunately led to negative acts, such as self-immolation, it has also strengthened the population in its fight for self-determination and cultural recognition. Many of these actions have brought to light the problems in Tibet on a global stage.